In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 through 9, where I'll ask the question, why did Solomon ask for wisdom? First Kings chapter 3, verses 5 through 9 says, At Gibeah, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for a multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this your great people? David has died, and Solomon is chosen by David prior to his death to become the king. And Solomon is young. He has an older brother who also wants to be the king. He had another older brother who tried to usurp King David and tried to take his place. So Solomon is aware of the fact that people, other people, want to be the king. They want to take the throne from him. And he's also aware of the fact that he might not be adequately prepared for the task at hand. So when the Lord comes to him in a dream and says that he is going to grant him what he asked for, Solomon asks for wisdom. Well, here are three thoughts from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 through 9, answering the question, why did Solomon ask for wisdom? Thought number one, to live up to David. Listen, David was a good king. And when I say a good king, I mean that he effectively ruled the people of Israel. He reigned for 33 years, and for those 33 years, he was pretty effective. Now, sure, he had problems. He had problems with Absalom. He had problems with Bathsheba. He had all manner of different issues. But for the large part, he was effective as a king. And Solomon wants to live up to his father's standards. You see, God had blessed David. And Solomon sees this. God had given his steadfast love to David. And this is something that Solomon also desires. He wants to have it. So he asks for wisdom so that way he can live up to his father. He recognizes that he's young, that he's inexperienced, that he's going to be taking the place of a king who was very successful and that God had cared for. And he wants to live up to his father's reputation. Thought number two, to govern well. Solomon sees that he needs to govern the people well. You need to take care of those who are in your authority. You need to take care of those who are experiencing the repercussions of all of your decisions. Solomon sees that, and he says, I need to govern these people well. But the only way I'm going to be able to govern the people of Israel well is if the Lord grants me wisdom beyond what I already have. One of the great things about Solomon is that he recognizes that he doesn't know everything. He recognizes that he might not have the answer for every given scenario. So when the Lord presents to him this wonderful offer of granting him whatever it is that he asks, he says, Lord, give me wisdom so that I can govern your people, your chosen people, well. Thought number three, to know good and evil. Another one of the issues that Solomon's inexperience points out is that he might not always be able to differentiate between that which is good and that which is evil. And this is a problem that everybody has. We're not always the best at differentiating the good from the evil. And because of that, sometimes we'll make decisions that aren't right. Well, Solomon wants to know good or evil so that way he can make the right decision when they're presented to him. He recognizes that the fate of the nation is largely in his hands, that the decisions that he makes are going to have an impact not just on himself, not just on his closest circle or his immediate family, but it's going to impact the entire people of God. The entire nation of Israel will be affected by the decisions that he makes. He has to know good and evil so that way he's not just making the right decision from a political perspective, but that he's making the right decision from a moral perspective, that he's making decisions that are pleasing to God. 
So this is something that we all need to ask the Lord for. We all need to ask the Lord for wisdom because don't we want to live up to the standards of godly men? And don't we want to exercise whatever authority we have well? And don't we want to know the difference between good and evil? Of course we do. So we follow Solomon's example and we ask the Lord to grant us wisdom. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of 1 Kings chapters 1 through 4. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.